Hello, BookTube, and welcome to our ongoing read-through of the Gospel according to St. Luke. We are reading the King James Bible version, and we are at chapter 18. Still more of Jesus talking. We're getting, uh, we've commented in earlier Gospels that we don't get a lot of, we don't hear him a lot of the time. We're told he's talking, but we don't hear what he's saying. We're making up for that here. Uh, so this is chapter 18. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because of this w widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not Lord God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he beg, that he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Interesting in that, for the one and only time that, uh, that we've seen so far, Luke, or any gospel writer, actually forewarns us what the, go the parable is about. Before we get the parable, he says uh, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He gives us a little, a little uh, synopsis ahead of time. Uh, and he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men were up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican, that is, a sinner, a tax collector. Uh, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I process, of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Uh, and they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. When his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter heaven. Again, a, a disconcerting cult call for the people who are listening to abandon their adult critical faculties. Always a warning sign. Uh, and a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these I have kept up from my youth. And when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, Sell all that thou hast, and distribute it unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they have that they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, the, thing, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And Peter said, Lo, we have left all, and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Very interesting little moment here. Jesus is forever admonishing people, or listen to him, to go and live virtuous lives, go and sin no more, your faith has saved you, go and follow the commandments and whatnot. But with this particular ruler, he wants another disciple. He says, come and follow me. And he is not obeyed. We, we're not specifically told it. But the, the, we're told that the man is sad when he hears this. We're not told that he refuses, but he obviously does. Uh, then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. As I mentioned, we have a progression to Jerusalem. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spat on, and they shall scourge him, and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. 
And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. Again, we've seen this in a couple of, uh, of Gospels. I don't understand why they don't understand this. Jesus isn't speaking in mysteries here. But I think it's rather the Gospel writer's way of telling us that they just can't believe it. Jesus is being incredibly celebrated. We have rulers of whole kingdoms coming to talk to him. We have Pharisees coming to warn him of trouble and to ask him questions. And most of all, we have gigantic crowds. It seems unbelievable. Uh, maybe that's what the gospel writer is trying to tell us, that they just don't believe it. Uh, and it came to pass that as he, come, as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat at the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. And that is the end of chapter 18. And it... Uh, it raises a big question. I mean, one, uh, the, just a tossed-off contention here that Christians just have to deal with, and usually the way that most of them do it is not to, is Jesus explicitly saying that he is not God. He's, he said, why are you calling me good? There's no one good except the Father. He's explicitly saying, I'm not God. God and me are two different people. That's, that's one part. Another part that always strikes me about this particular chapter is this blind man at the end. He hears the crowd going by. Jesus at this point can't go anywhere with a gigantic multitude around him. The blind man hears that crowd and asks what it is. What's going on? And someone tells him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. It is fairly obvious from context that the blind man has never heard of Jesus of Nazareth. And doesn't know anything about it. There's no time. This uh, the, this anecdote takes place in, in two seconds. It's, the crowd tells him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Either the man doesn't know who he is and just is told he's a wonder worker, or he does know that he's a wonder worker and doesn't know anything else about him. He calls out to him, and when Jesus says, what would you like to me? He doesn't say, I want eternal life. He doesn't say, I want to know the kingdom of heaven. He says, I want my sight. And Jesus says, your sight is restored to you. Your faith has healed you. But the man has no faith. He's only just heard of Jesus. Knows nothing about him at all. Has not studied the law. Has not uh, agreed to take up his cross or to be meek or to be the first shall be last and the last shall be first. He doesn't know any of that. He just wants his sight back. He'd have taken it from anybody, <laughs> right? In an earlier gospel, the, the disciples come back to Jesus and say, we met a guy who was healing people in your name, successfully healing people in your name. We don't know. And Jesus didn't know him and said, well, he wasn't, wasn't doing any harm. If he's not for me, if he's not for me, he's against me. If he's not against me, he's for me. So let it be. So this blind guy would have taken his sight back from that or from anyone. And yet Jesus says, your faith has healed you. Uh, in this, as in a lot of cases, especially the preponderance of all this dialogue that we're getting of, G of Jesus himself, all of these little details lead me to think what we've said many times before, and of course, you know, thousands of years of Christian scholarship have said the same thing, uh, which is that what I wouldn't give, what you wouldn't give, to see the materials that Luke was working on, the author of this gospel, was working on, open in front of him. What were those materials? I would love to know that, because I think the, some of the inconsistencies here, some of the oddnesses, some of the little jagged bits lodged in like peach pits, I think those are remnants of what he's looking at, of the, the scholar or maybe the team of scholars who was looking at all of this and deciding to write it up. I would love to know that, but that is, that is the end of this chapter, and the, you, you could hear already, the notes are struck. Jesus is on the move in Jericho, outside of Jericho, and he has told the disciples, not only are we moving, not only are we getting closer and closer to Jerusalem, but Jerusalem is the end. Jerusalem is my doom. 
and they just they hear the words but they just don't believe it so we'll the story will progress from here so we'll move on next time and i will see you then thank you for people